pre-K pause. Washington, D.C. teachers. Philadelphia teachers. Boston teachers. We're coming to you over summer break. We're bringing the podcast to you. Teachers Off Duty is going on tour. Not the comedy tour, the podcast tour. Two different shows. Both funny, but different. We're going live, baby. No, not on the internet. Live in person in your hometown, okay? I mean, come on, besties. You, me, drinks, laughs, bathroom breaks whenever we want. <laughs> I mean, what else could you need? What else could you possibly want? It's not just a podcast recording, it's a full experience. You'll see some brand new exclusive comedy skits. And have a live Q&A. Some fun teacher trivia. And topping it off with an epic lip sync battle that you don't want to miss. We'll be at the Warner Theater in D.C. on June 23rd. The Fillmore in Philadelphia, my hometown on June 24th. And the Wilbur in Boston on June the 25th. Let's kick off the summer right. Go get your tickets. They're not going to last. Don't live with FOMO. This is a dream come true, and it's all thanks to you. Love you, best friends. See you soon. Hey, best friends. On this week's episode of Teachers Off Duty, we are talking about all the things that they did not teach us in college, from dealing with crazy parents to how to unjam the copy machine to how to do a lesson on the fly when the Wi-Fi goes out. Join us <laughs> Join us this week. For the episode of Teachers Off Duty. Hey, best friends, welcome back to the Teachers Off Duty podcast. This week, we will be talking about things that they did not teach us in college. Sure didn't. And we have some advice that someone needs like right off the bat. Mm. They said, Dear Tell, I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like the parents of my students keep getting more and more difficult to deal with every mm. year. All the time. Maybe it's not just you. Mm -hmm. I've been teaching for five years now, and each year I think about how nothing I learned in college prepared me for how to handle these parents. I feel like there should be some training course or an actual college course only about that. Do you have any secret tips? My tip is to turn off your phone mm. <laughs> and to never answer an email. No. Uh, like, this was this was hard just to like. Don't communicate just with don't them communicate. At all. The best Ghost form them. of communication is ghosting the parent. It's giving block. If you don't open up the line of communication, they don't know. then they can't come yeah. at you with yeah. the nonsense. Yeah. Turn off read receipts uh -huh. on your phone. Um, People who have their read receipts on ain't scared of nobody. No. I started getting Google Voice and then Class Dojo and all that. Because mm. at 3 a.m. one time I had a parent message me that's like, um, Bobby won't be in tomorrow. I said, is everything okay? I thought they were in the hospital. Oh, no. He's just not feeling well. It is 3 a.m. Why are you up? I'm like. Bobby's throwing up on right. the floor. Oh, yeah. So I, but I had read receipts on because I thought that was kind of like. Oh. Oh, I checked it and trouble. I chose not to. I stopped doing that. But I think like it's hard to like. For me, I think it, uh, in true real advice, you have to set that boundary. So they do need to teach in college how to talk to parents because parents, I feel, uh, are half the job. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But I also think you need to create that boundary of like, always feel like there is an, a line of, uh, an email. Call parents when there's not something going wrong. I 100% yes. agree with Call that. Call them when something positive is happening. I suck yeah. at that. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Like, I'm too. so busy it's that hard. I just don't have the time a lot of the right. time. So my bad. Hard. One of my uh, favorite tips that I was taught was if you have a kid that you know has a history of behavioral issues, yeah. like you know it's going to be rough, yep. at the beginning of the year, find any little good thing that they did and yeah. email yep. home yep. right away. Yep. Say, hey, Facts. Bobby did such a good job of this today. Love having your kid in yep. class. Because in a week, there's going to come a time that Bobby's flipping tables and you better have a little bit flipping of rapport tables. with the uh, with the family. I do that. It's just like random things throughout the yeah. year. You know, I don't that's have harder. like I I that's a weakness of mine that I am like I don't actively, you know, find some positive thing well, to say to a parent mm -hmm. every single week. But do they cuz they know? don't they don't teach you that. They teach you to to positively enforce the child, but they don't tell they don't you to take you, it a right. step forward and say, yeah. you know, hey, like I'm sure like you have a a, a preschooler, right? Mm -hmm. If every time you're getting an email was because something happened negatively, you're going to come up like, you know, fist ready when the teacher wants right, to have a conversation right. with you. Some kind of way. You're going to get immediately, you're going to get defensive and yeah. not listen to the teacher. So That's my baby. Why are you talking yeah, about Yeah, it made me feel 100%. Some kind of way. 100%. Yeah. And I'm going to hem up. 
when we get to the house, but understand that it would make me feel some kind of way right. as a parent. See, when I was in college, we did take a course. Like, there was a class that was, it was like family uh, engagement or something oh. like that. Huh. Where was this? Like, in, your, uh, in college? In my, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. But wow. like, it didn't teach me the things that I needed to know. It taught me things that are useful, but don't actually like what get used. Stuff? Okay, so one of the major projects we had to like, Make a class newsletter, which, okay, I do that okay, every yeah, week. Yeah. Um, you do a class newsletter every week? Very basic one. It's, it's the a very basic like, thing. Here's the, here's the skill. It's just a template. Here's the yeah. skill we're doing in each subject, any, any tests we have this week, and then like I have a little notes section. And sometimes I have something to say, and sometimes I'm like, hey, have a great She's weekend. A you know, <laughs> giving a test that week? She's a good teacher. Like, I don't know what I I'm do. teaching them tomorrow. <laughs> I know. I'm also type A. But anyway, so, <laughs> Be so this class... <laughs> <laughs> you are me typical. We had this class that like one of the the final projects of the year was you had to actually plan a family event that okay. like the your other college student friends would attend as the families. Oh gosh. So like we had to have we had like a partner we had to have a brochure. We had to have like a, a skill, a family skill, or like something that we were trying to like teach the parents or teach to the families. Did you and then have we to had do to have it? an activity. Yeah. So like ours, mm -mm. what we did was we were doing something on like blended families and okay. like how to, um, you know, become a cohesive unit or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. And our activity was like building a blended family trail mix. So like we had like a trail okay. mix bar and each of the different pieces right. of trail mix represented but was there something &Ms? different. There were. M&Ms were like, we need to talk to each other more. Yeah. You know, like they each they stood for something that they needed. Talk to the parents. Right. It was like how to plan a family event. Well, it, it wasn't how to, it was how how to, to speak to parents on a daily. It's how to give like, them family therapy, uh -huh. but not how to build a relationship with you right. and right. them. Right. I love my families this year. Honestly, they've, they've all been very supportive. Like any time that I have had to call home, mm -hmm. the, I have been met with understanding That's and good. like support. And it's so rare to get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just really greatly appreciate those families. I wish I would have learned in college, how do you communicate in a positive way right. that's also going to be like absolutely. beneficial and yeah. like absolutely. make yeah. changes right. with parents who are just like shut down to education absolutely. and parents who don't want to hear from you. You went to s school specifically for education, yes. right? Yeah. Did right. you go to school for specifically for it? Yeah, and, um, USF yeah. College of Ed. So my degree was in it was in interpersonal communication. Mm -hmm. So I learned more there about how to communicate with people, mm. not parents, right? Yeah. Just, I, it was just people interpersonal. In and then when I started because I fell into teaching, I didn't, I, I didn't, what didn't set out. Fine. So then they sent me back to get my teaching credentials. Yeah. And it was weird within those teaching credentials in preschool, right? Because it's a specific credential for that. We didn't have those classes. And so it's weird to me to think that I feel like I was more equipped to talk to parents as someone who's not an Never education the right. degree. The people. I feel like the majority of my education in college was all about curriculum. Yeah. And oh, lesson yeah. Content, lesson planning, yeah, the yeah. content areas I was gonna be teaching. Yeah, how to deal like, with an observation. Because I was doing elementary ed, like I had to take like child psych and I had to take yeah. um, like, yeah. I think I had to take like a child nursing class. It was a, literally taught by a nurse. I had to take a childhood like health and wellness class where I had to learn all these different diseases and like things that children could contract. Did you have to do that? No. Uh, yeah, it's, but that's like, like the longest first aid but I'm like, training. I have never, <laughs> okay. It was. I'm like, Here's what I will looks never. Like. No, exactly. <laughs> ask me if I remember any of it. Right. Like I had to learn like what rubella looked like, and I'm like, no, I am never going to be the one to die for like that, fam. Right. Like, right. Like, oh, you, know you have a rash? Like? Go yeah. to the nurse. Yeah. I don't know right. if you got yeah. the chicken pox or a ringworm, fam. Just don't touch me. Go to the nurse. That's what I'm saying. I feel like the majority of those things that I learned were like not even useful to yeah. me. That, yeah. Like they felt like in the yeah. time I was like, wow, I'm really gonna know this They feel stuff disconnected and though. Yeah. And I'm like, nope, I don't use that on the you, daily you, basis. You know what, I wish they would have taught me, speaking of families, I wish they would have taught me how to handle a parent-teacher conference when the families start fighting in your classroom. What? Oh, I've never had that. Oh, I had to watch Darius oh, yeah. oh, learn how to oh, yeah. handle it. But I've had that every year where families will start- Are you serious? They'll start arguing and fighting and like bickering back and forth. I'm just sitting there like, don't feel like you have to stay. Like, right. <laughs> thanks for coming. Yeah, it's always so awkward. I'm like, gonna get up. I'll let y'all have a room. Yeah. I'm gonna leave. I feel I'm gonna, I'm gonna well. I'm, I feel like I would want to be like, all right, we're not doing this here. 
goodbye. See, but I, I can't don't fight, know if I so would have the nuts. When you're to in the moment, fight, right? I can't fight. So yeah, like for I'll me, do like whatever y'all want. When I'm in the moment, I just kind of like freeze. I'm like, oh, this is happening. Like they're doing this right here. They don't care that I am right here and there's uh, you know, people waiting in line they to come in the classroom. Like they they don't care. It's got to be deeper issues. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're willing to yell at your partner or yeah. ex partner in front of people, there's mm -hmm. I don't know. I I think like I mean I just met you today, but those who know me, I am not afraid of confrontation in the sense of like getting not getting in the middle of it because that's not what I would do. But like I'm not afraid of like helping people talk like through reconcile that. It. Yeah, it, like it doesn't. But interpersonal communication. Yeah, right. And now being right. a therapist, so it's like, it, but <laughs> it's it is it's such an uncomfortable thing that's like I wish like not just that right like. For example, advocating for yourself. They don't teach you. They definitely didn't teach me oh, that right. in my you know yeah. two years it took me to get the the teaching certificate of like what happens if your administration does this or what happens if a parent does this or what yeah. happens if a colleague does this to how to advocate for yeah. yourself and also like something they probably don't want to teach teachers is like there's powers and numbers. So like if you're mm -hmm. talking as a group of teachers and like you don't want to go to these you know staff trainings on Monday morning at six a.m collectively talk as a group and like right. but like they don't teach you that yeah. at all I can write a lesson just to plan, deal with it. Bro, oh yeah i got nine pages uh -huh. lesson plans i know down. how, how to is... align some standards uh -huh. i feel like a lot of the work that we did in college of education preparatory programs was just like hey be on the lookout for this mm -hmm. Then that was it. it was just, yeah, yeah, yeah we just waited sure, for the end of that sentence. Yeah. Make sure that you yeah. are familiar with Colin parents, and Which we you're gonna have, have to figure out how to do an IEP. No, mm. and I like oh, I, gosh, I realize I, yeah. the majority of it right now because I have a student teacher with me yeah. all year, and I I, I feel like I only stayed a semester. Well, she did her like first semester which was her like preclinicals or whatever yeah. they just observe you and then now she's in her student teaching block oh, okay so, but they let her stay in my like room a practicum or something yeah, yeah yeah so every little thing that i do i assume she doesn't know so i'm like let mm -hmm. me show you like how to use google classroom yeah. she didn't know mm -hmm. let me show you and it's nothing against her because she's she is amazing well, they just she's didn't a great teach teacher her that, yeah, yeah and that college program does not teach you that nope. that it's no. it's on the job training no like how to use progress book like what is which progress is, book well it's what i like it's our grading system oh, oh, so okay. like in i don't so, know like we use power school okay. use yeah it's just ah, a it's just school, a yeah. yeah just a grading book online the parents can like access mm -hmm. and stuff. But like, I didn't know how to use that when I graduated. I didn't know how to, like we went through, I think two special ed courses and I did not even once take eyesight on an IEP. Hmm. That's Ra random, alarming. Random isn't question. that? Isn't that? Random like, question. How many of us would have been in trouble if our grade book was virtual when we were kids? Cause these parents, these kids, their parents can see mm -hmm. they grade when they put it in. My mom would say, "I got a 50 on the assignment. I'm getting my senior year. I'm getting in trouble when I get home." That was how it these rolled kids, out. My senior year. Their parents can see like what they get. Now some of them don't care, obviously, but I can't think of how much trouble I would have gotten in. Well, based on the fact that I'm 25 years old, he, I it, lived it. it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm 31. Yeah. I Dave, never. Ours was on a strip up. of paper. <laughs> we, tried, yeah. we had to peek over our teacher's shoulder yeah. to see right. in that little. Do uh, you remember? Green and white. Do you remember the little like grading scale thing they had? It was like a rectangle. And they could pull it oh, for how many yeah. points oh, yeah. the grade, was worth. Easy grade or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I got was, one of those for me. It was literally just like a little slider, and it had like a bubble, and it was like, oh, if this test is worth fifty points, yep. if they got this, this is the percentage yep. that they got, and that's how they would grade your yep. test. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, no, I just put the point value in, and it comes up with the percentage mm -hmm. for me. That's <laughs> like, so wild. This episode of Teachers Off Duty is brought to you by Zocdoc. There's nothing worse than going to a doctor's appointment expecting to be the center of attention, and then your doctor seems like they have better things to do and better places to be. Instead of listening to you intently, asking you how you feel, and helping you get to the bottom of your problem, the doctor is checking the clock. On ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Go to ZocDoc.com teachers and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash teachers. ZocDoc.com slash teachers. 
here's one of the situations that I so wish that I would have been taught this in college, but, and it's happened to me every year that I've taught is, what do you do when you've got a kid who wants to go by a certain set of pronouns, but the parents want a different set of pronouns? We want the best for your little baby. Yeah, and, and it's a complex, you know, yeah. as a parent, it is a, it is a, complex thing because now that this is the first year my daughter has went to school so now like i'm seeing things from that you didn't see before the, right and so peyton got in trouble for uh some kid took like a seahorse she was playing with and she wanted it so she like snatched it back and they all got in trouble and went to time i was like the preschool drama you didn't oh, tell know. me about the preschool drama I... baby they be in some drama do you drama. hear me <laughs> but as a parent there was like one kid in her class i felt like when they were around each other she kept getting in trouble and so as a parent in a sense i almost wanted to be like well it's not her fault like she he's around her when he's around her she gets in trouble but i'm like you as an educator take a step back yeah okay it's both there yeah it's both of them yeah they got to learn how to interact with each other yes they do right and so as a parent, sometimes we can lose, and I, I've, we've talked about this before. As yeah. parents, sometimes we kind of lose reason a little bit. Yeah, hey, because <laughs> we're baby. like the woman yeah. who wanted yeah. the woman whose child got stung by a bee, and she was mad at the teacher because she said she should have made the bee sting somebody else, ma'am. You have lost reason because <laughs> we sorry. cannot do it. But I'm telling you, like, as a mother, there's like this. I didn't like learn this... B communication in college. <laughs> right, right. There's just like this. That was actually this... a course at USF. So <laughs> I learn B communication. Well, there's just like this internal instinct as a parent. And you're like, you want to protect your child and like you want to make sure your child feels validated. But at the same time, you know your kid. So yeah. I couldn't be like, oh, well, Peyton's getting in trouble because of him. No, I know my baby. Right. So I know mm -hmm. both y'all in cahoots with each other. So 100%. both y'all in trouble. Both y'all yeah. go to time. Mm -hmm. So I might be it's, that one kid acting up, but yeah. you're responsible for your actions as well. Come well, on, you, and you can't get sucked into it. I don't think they teach us about confrontation between kids in the sense of like what realistically happens, right? Yeah. Going through the, yes. what do they call the conflict resolution, 10 steps, like they'd be like, it was on our boards. We had every classroom had to have the poster and we're supposed to look up and go through each one of them. It doesn't work. And I know that like, I'm interested in knowing because you have a student teacher now. So is it one of those things that it's like when you go to a new job, you're like, they're going to tell you not to do this, but this is how I do it kind of thing. Cause it's like, I do sometimes I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm going to show you a bad teacher moment right now. This is yeah. what I do <laughs> right. because it works. I'm like, but this is what they're going to tell a you bad to do. Teacher because moment. That's, that's, that's a real teacher moment. Right. Right. I know, a real I know teacher but like, you know, I'm going against the grain going against right. what, you the know, the college is, is teaching you. Sandpaper and it's be withering away smoke. at us. Yeah. Right. With it. <laughs> Want all I don't right? understand. Well, the thing that I, uh, so I recently <laughs> love him, man. He's like, I don't care nothing about that. I don't. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. But like, um, so just recently I spoke at a college to their like education association. And I remember not having like a dedicated classroom management course in Which college. Like we, like we had classroom environment. We, I which, had that but class. It, that but it same. was like you had to come up with a classroom management plan for your classroom. And then you had to come up with like an actual map of what you you would want your classroom to look like. Okay. Why you would set like things the way that you would You're set them up. teaching or just this like. Was, no, I was, this is like my junior year of college. So I had this course. supposed to know that before student teaching. That's true. Yeah. Well, Hopefully you have practical. You, they right. had a textbook you had to read, but it was, oh, you know, because wow. that's how it goes. Ah. So, Pearson, you're good. You're yeah. Pearson will tell you. Pearson it was monopolizing like a, autumn textbooks. <laughs> it was like a whole binder project. And like I found it a, like a little while back and I'm looking at them and I'm reading my classroom. I got an A on this project. I'm huh. looking at my classroom management strategies that I had written down and I was like, that would never work. You're this dumb. is dumb. Yeah. What the hell were you thinking? Yeah. And right. then right. I go to this this thing and I'm I was asking them, I'm like, do you guys take a course on classroom management? And they all like hun a hundred teacher candidates were like, No. And these are all hmm. seniors. That is a deafening sound. And I'm like, yeah. Oh God. Okay. I would have never known my first year teaching that I would have, you know, someone throwing desks and chairs at me. Right. What do you do? Right. Like they, it's not like they go in college. Okay. So if this student picks up a chair, you duck to the left. Right. right. If they right. pick up right. a desk, right. you Bobby run the dive, other way. Dive, right. dig, boom, boom, dive, bam, boom. Dive. Dive. Yes. <laughs> what? Dive, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Oh, is that from Dodgeball? Yeah. Oh. That was from Titanic. <laughs> yes. I do remember that scene, the Dodgeball scene at, at yeah. the bottom of the boat. Yeah. Not me being like, wait, they got Dodgeball when, in when Titanic? Rose, Rose said Jack never let me go, and Jack just went, bam. Right, <laughs> right, right after the car scene. I love a Dodgeball. Like that sound that, that a kickball or a Dodgeball makes when it hits fresh skin. Oh, oh my God. I oh. love You know what they did teach me in college? They taught me there's no such thing as a dumb question. 
That there really is the hell there is. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And it's like, I learned that that is completely false. It is. And it wasn't because like the kids asking dumb questions. It was my first staff meeting. The oh, questions okay. well, that's that fair. get asked in a staff meeting. I'm like, I'm like, bro, shit. Oh my goodness. Up, like, this is where we're going. When you are 45 minutes into a faculty yeah. Don't meeting. Don't ask no yeah. questions. And then that one, I just have three separate Put questions. Yeah. Yeah. What if down. this happens? Oh. Yeah. I think it's always Jeez. something that's like So Ms. I just want to reiterate, so we are looking at you, Miss Edison. Put, we're supposed to put our grades in the grade book. Girl, you didn't need to reiterate <laughs> that. You wanted to hear yourself talk. <laughs> because exactly. No, they want to look good. I just wanted to make sure that that was due Tuesday. It was due to, okay, I did it Tuesday. No one else did it Tuesday. I'm like, you, mm, like, girl, if your husband don't pay you enough attention yeah. at home, just say yeah. that. So yeah. What, yeah. what exactly were my students' test scores again last year? I just, for data <laughs> purposes. Stop blessing on them test scores. Just, just wondering. Oh we know it's you got good to you, baby. You got teacher of the year right there <laughs> on you. So if, if there's one word that I am sick to death of is See. data. Data, yeah. data, data, <laughs> this and that. Yeah, whatever. We're taking time, yeah. tests and we're doing great. But at least my school, the one that I'm at now, they only measure the last exam of the year That's on it? their growth. That's really it. They don't take what? into account the other huh? two. Just P3 is what they count for the data for the year. Right so nah, it's, no, we do. Well, not, we do three sets. Whenever I hear count. administrators say, like, well, the data is is going up, I'm like, mm, yeah. Is it? it, is it, is it? <laughs> Do you guys have any college professors that you look back on? And you're like, they were rock solid. I've got one. Yeah. Got or one. I've got, I've got, a, I had a number of really good ones. I, I did have some good ones. I have but one. But the one that always comes to my, mind, to my mind, Nancy Tidd. Nancy Tidd, I hope you're watching this. She changed my life forever. I love that. She was such a, a real life teacher and mm -hmm. she actually taught us things like, hey, here's what you need to know. Yeah. And we would yeah. have so many sit down meetings and she was just, she was, she was like my grandma. I look like, Aww. it was awesome. Like she yeah. was the greatest teacher I've ever had in my entire That's life. That's fantastic. I, I had a, yeah. I had a teacher like that in college. I hated, for some reason I hated history. I always felt like it was like just taking notes and it was boring. A teacher I had a wrong. professor at Union. His name was Keith Bates. Best. I always had on. Kind of reminded me of um, what's the the Dead Poet Society? Robin Williams. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, Quarter yeah. War jacket on. Yeah, and he always had the little leather satchel. That, that was my man's. Okay, when he came in class, he made history so freaking entertaining. It was like watching a movie every day in class. I'm like, Ooh, what are we learning about today? Like the even I didn't even mind taking notes because he just like the history that you was learning is like made it he brought it off of the pages mm -hmm. of a book and yeah. made it like super interesting. I have a couple professors that I remember their faces, but not. The their names yeah and then I have like a couple that I I remember their name like so my one that I actually learned valuable information from Gail Saunders Smith she is a very eccentric woman love Ooh. her to death with a name like Saunders like, Smith yeah she's, you're, she's you're an, born in that she <laughs> is a published author I love that. yeah she's she's written like children's books and stuff like she was the best I learned bougie. all of my literacy stuff from her and then I had the one class that I, it was kind of like just a random gen ed elective I had to take was environmental science. I had to take environmental science. And just because you had to have a science course yeah, and I yeah. was not a science teacher. So I took environmental science for every test, bless his heart, his <laughs> old man heart, would wrap a review no. for the test. Every single what? one. What does that mean? What? A like, rap. He would write a rap. Oh my God. You I would have melted into in a three, the floor. In a 300 <laughs> person lecture <laughs> would rap to not. us. That to is our amazing. Like the kid. I'm going wow, like to do like the kids say, be so for real. He was trying. <laughs> it was he was trying. Respectfully, sir, sit little... down. But I remember it. <laughs> I Do you remember the rap? No, I remember. Oh, I, I like remember. Well, I was rapping. like, okay, never mind. So that's a flex. So if you would have remembered it, I would have well, I'm probably I did for the test, but not now. Hey, we're going live. Taking the show on the road. <laughs> we're in D.C. on the 23rd, my husband's birthday. Yay. Yeah. We're in Philadelphia on the 24th, my hometown. Woo! And then we're in uh, Boston on the 25th. Why is every tour all about you? So here's what you're going to see when you come to the live show. You're going to see us do a normal recording, just like you're listening to. Normal. Normal. Yeah. As normal we're as this gets. We're not normal. And then we have a ton of other content that you're going to see. We have exclusive skits that you're going to see. Q&A moment. Ooh, I love me a good Q&A. Yeah. I do too. It's fun. We're going to play embarrassing games. Got a couple challenges we're gonna do. And we you think gonna, you'll like it. In a musical surprise, maybe. Where are you? <laughs> Where are you? Hopefully at one of the shows. <laughs> so please buy our tickets. <laughs> y'all, y'all. I'm see so how much sorry. Fun we have on set. That's how the live show gonna be. It's gonna be Go absolutely. To the crazy. Teachers Off Duty website. Go grab your tickets now, and we'll see you there. If you don't come, to your mom's up.
it just shot a memory into my brain. Um, had a high school physics teacher. I think he still works there. His name was Mr. Perez. Love you. He love was out. this teeny tiny little Hispanic man, and he just had a very soft-spoken way that he talk, and this is the way that he talked to the class. And before every test, <laughs> I love this, he would go, okay, so today we're going to be taking our test, and before we take a test, we have to wish everybody good luck. Aww. So what I want everybody to do is go, good luck, everybody, good luck, good luck, everybody, good luck. Oh, and he my gosh. Do that before, as juniors as in high I, school. Now I'm That's going to awesome. steal that. And oh, use that. oh, my God. My yeah. heart is so cute. Oh, my I've heart never dream. forgotten it. I had a college professor. Precious. My That's big awesome. professor. It, her name is Laura Sabella. Dr. Sabella, what she was Professor Sabella when I had her for the first class. I had her for three separate classes because she kept moving up with us because she was in her PhD program. Mr. Feeney. It was so amazing. Feeney. It was Feeney. amazing. <laughs> so I had her for methods of teaching high school English, and she was one of those teachers that was, all right, this is how it's gonna be. This mm. is the real, the teacher way to do it, and this yeah. is the real way to do it. And then I had her for methods of teaching middle school. Mm. Um, and then she graduated to be the intern coordinator. And right. she was assigning all the interns, and she wasn't supposed to take any interns, but she took one. Oh. Aww. Aww. She kind of took me under her, ah, I'm gonna get. No, seriously, oh, teachers make a huge impact on that. She yeah. took me under her wing a little bit, yeah. and I remember oh, I was cry. so scared about teaching middle school yeah. and she put me into an eighth grade English class and did Ooh, an observation I did oh. an observation cycle <laughs> with her where she was acting as the observer and she sat me down and had this conversation with me that I will never forget and in all of my trying moments mm -hmm. she said that there are some people that were born to do this and you were one of the people oh. that was born to do it. I that's can't mess had, up my makeup, had... KZ. Oh, my <laughs> child, <laughs> no. uh, That was so sweet. Gee, and those are words that have awesome. stuck with you. Yeah. Yeah. They are chiseled you on my tombstone. When somebody, they when are somebody that says something like that, you know they solid. saw that yeah. in yeah. you. They yeah. meant that. The way you talk about your students and the way you advocate for them, like that is like someone who's meant to be teaching. Yeah. And and I always say teaching is a form of advocacy. It so is. you're So you're sitting there and you're doing that. And, and when you have professors or teachers or principals or admin who Get sit back there, in there tier. like this is a this is a safe room it's hot yeah so yeah. you can we can say hot it's sweating if you feel that but that's important that we encourage the new the new teachers yeah. coming up right like yeah. especially now i worry about the people who i'm not saying that they that these professors are bad by any stretch right, i mean right. my husband's a professor um Flex. Yeah, I mean, Humble it's hard though, to doctor, maintain that connection it, when maintain, you're not in the classroom. Yeah. Anymore. And then on top of that, you put in a pandemic, and right. so so it's, it's, it's hard totally when you're weird, talking right. to people. Like I know in in grad school, when I'm talking to my professors, they're all still there. Every single one of them is still a therapist. Mm. So it's not like they don't get what it's like to be talking because I have yeah. I have out of my right. clients, they're either kids or teachers that yeah. are my clients. So it's like they get that. When we say what happens when a child throws a, a you know chair at her head, it's not the most crazy circumstance yeah. out there. It's a pretty, pretty normal, normal thing. You now. need to extend yeah. that to administrators as well. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Well, the kids place. are throwing desks and they're they're. I tell them to do their work and they just go. <laughs> <laughs> and then just sit there. But did you make sure you had your standards on the right. board? Right. <laughs> did you have your I can statement? Did yeah. you build a, but did you build a relationship? Oh. Have, have, you, tried, have you tried proximity? <laughs> <laughs> proximity. These kids, look, if you book, but proximity ain't doing nothing no, for proximity them. Proximity doesn't do nothing. What works is chaos. What works <laughs> is chaos. I had kids yeah. this week crumpling up food. They're eating in my class. And I don't, I don't care if you do these things, but you ask me first. Oh yeah. If you want to have your phone out, you ask me before you do. Don't just pull it out and act like you're the boss of my house. <laughs> Absolutely not. So while they're eating, my name's food, on the door. Dang it! I just put it out into the void. I was like, all right, whoever's eating in class, I'm gonna tell you right now. If I hear you eating in class and I don't give you explicit permission, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up, open your bag of food, and spit in it. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's so gross. And they all. Turn around and they're like, what'd you say? And I just go, <laughs> that is what I will do right in your bag of food. Try I'm it. I'm getting a right up that day because you're not going to spit in my Takis. <laughs> <laughs> my blue Takis. But you know what they did the rest of the week? They asked if they, they wanted to eat. They asked yeah, if they could so eat. That is so funny. Yeah. That is 
so funny and so gross at the same time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's okay to threaten your students. <laughs> I fully they believe don't teach you that. There's a time and place to make threats. It's Sometimes okay. you gotta threaten. Bribery. It's perfectly okay to do Bribe. something like a light sprinkling, a gas uh -huh. lighting. I do not agree with <laughs> yeah, any of. I, 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 would, I would like the record to reflect that I do not agree with any of these statements. <laughs> that honest, honest teacher vibes is in no I, way. I don't, I don't threaten, but I bribe. I bribe. Oh, I bribe. Yeah, yeah, but I we will not have donut day if we're not all napping. I like, will <laughs> No, no, so I, need an I actually started my class economy and oh my it's gosh, going, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's going so well. Ooh. I love it. Like I, I, I used this? to hate. So okay, I saw a video. I, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but there was a teacher. Te she teaches third grade. I've seen her videos multiple times. She does a class economy with sure. her kids. So she teaches them how to budget their money. Like she, oh. they have a job. They get paid. Great. They pay rent. She talked uh, about inflation. I, they can yes, buy things yes, I know what you're talking in about. their class store. So I was like. Love fantastic. that, taking that inspiration. I literally had Jordan design me my own cash. Oh my gosh. He designed me Euro style cash that has like Fancy. corner gym on the $1 corner bill. Corner gym. He's got a bear on the on the $5 bill because that's our mascot. And then Tater Tot is on the $10 bill. What's the name of your currency? That is awesome. Um, Wooly. No, it's the Big Bear Bank. Big Bear Bank. And oh. yeah, it's, it's okay, the Big Bear Bank. And so they each week they have a job. They had to write an application letter for their first job, explaining why they would be a good candidate for the job and what other jobs they would be willing to take I if they didn't this. get that. Like, yes, this is then they valuable. not it every is. job gets paid the same amount. You there are some Each jobs Woolly. that received a sign-on bonus because they're not wanted jobs. There are um, bonuses they can earn for earning A's or B's on any kind of test. What's one of the unwanted jobs? Like custodian, because they have to pick yes, all the yes, stuff up yes, off I the floor. Yes, I love that. And I love and that. And they yes. don't like picking up each other's messes. Jobs. Yeah. It's a custodian, and then we have so like, creative. well, I have the one that's like the hot button issue is the hall monitor. Mm. So the hall monitor gets paid the most in the entire classroom because you basically have to rat on your friends. <gasps> so they- so you have to get paid right. for snitching. Yeah, no, they, okay, so the hall, like, and they it's great. Like it. for the, the first week of applications, my one student was like, I would make a great hall monitor because I don't care if people get mad at me if I find them. And you're they, okay. They can earn a fine wow. if, they're, <laughs> if they're not following expectations or, if like I think I only have a couple things that they have to pay fines for like hallway expectations is one yeah. in my classroom I don't do behavior fines I do something like else we have bear badges that we use they get fined if they have to charge their Chromebook because they weren't responsible and charge it at home like they're supposed mm. to and they have to do their homework if they don't they either can choose to pay a fine or they have to sit in the morning during like Maybe. I give them soft starts is time Mayor this Wally? is a top notch oh. economy do the homework then so I, I don't this like punish really them for not having help with homework. At Have you home. thought about sending this to our government? No. But but like yeah, it right. works and it's they love us. Like, this I don't even have to tell them anymore. They every day all the jobs get done at, on That's Fridays. Fantastic. It's payday. They pay seven or six dollars rent. The if they I have a couch in my room. This if they want impressive. the couch, they have to pay three extra dollars of rent. That wow. way, there's no fighting over the couch <laughs> anymore. Yeah. It is the greatest thing I ever that put in place. That is fantastic. In my head, you every child's coming in with a pantsuit and, and a briefcase. I, have, <laughs> just. I, I will. And then I have a class store. And last week, they learned about inflation. I am, I increased all the prices by like 40%. And they were like, Dang. what? Lunch Big bunch school. costs Eighteen dollars now. I'm like, yeah, go yeah. Yeah. Our our world kid. Yeah. They're Back like, of eggs. and they're, right. how this is relevant. And they're not allowed to have less than five dollars in their. They have little bank accounts. That Who is a good thing to remember. A, oh my they gosh. have a balance log. They have to like balance a checkbook. So like they put in their date, what they got the money for, whether it was a payment or a deposit, and then they put their total balance. I'm like, oh my god, they're doing it! Well, like, you <laughs> have to do a YouTube video on this. Yeah, I know I, that's honestly. random, but you. No, I I want to because I and I don't want to take credit for the idea because it was not my idea. Right, and right, I, right. And people will comment. Yeah, but, it was but idea. you learn. You had to learn to do that. If you from go back to add extra stuff, to yeah, but it's, I'm telling you, if you go, if you go back to oh, comment, yeah. please, comment, please, so we can know who you eat. If, no, if you go back to our Damon episode, I say it in that episode. Okay. Or financial I, literacy episode. I can't episode. remember. Yes, I can't remember her her handle exactly. I'm so sorry, but like. Seriously, she sparked something in me and I was like, that is it's something I want to do. That's a great life skill. And they do it. They're like, I only like I really want to buy chips and Gatorade today, but I won't have five dollars left in my bank account. I'm like, OK, so you have to decide which one would you rather have or do you want to save your money and maybe get both next week? Boy, I and wish they, I would have learned that. You, you oh should, my gosh. You should throw in uh, like divorce settlements. <laughs> 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 what it feels like to lose you half of your You and your friend your got in a fight. You have yeah. to pay half of your 
money. <laughs> you want to be sorry. That's too well, you gotta give, him, give him an egg with a face on it and then make him pay right. child support. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Daycare in the back. That's you know, too, like, too real credit life. card debt feels that's like. Too real life. <laughs> but I think that's weird. It's uh, not weird, but I think it's interesting because it's like you you almost learn more from other teachers. Oh, I, yeah, than, I, than I ever learned from college. In school. And that's 100%. that's a great way to bring it back to what we didn't learn in college because I learned the majority of my amazing yep. strategies that I use from other, other teachers. teachers, not just TikTok. me reinventing right. the wheel. Okay, I yes. learned stuff from TikTok. I'm yes. like, girl, what? TikTok right. has been the most. It, it's become a search engine at this point yeah. right. but uh, honestly i learned so many amazing classroom strategies from all of the teachers on tiktok instagram youtube yeah. it is so helpful like in college i know they would like shun us if we used anything from teachers pay teachers i think that's so dumb because yeah. here's the thing really they don't like why, that no they why don't why are we reinventing the wheel over and over right. again the yeah. reality is teachers pay why? teachers was the goat right yes for virtual learning stop playing it yeah. was i yeah, still yeah. use teachers Sorry, pay not teachers. everybody let's be real not everybody can create amazing curriculum because, like, but because I, when you're worried about creating that that's when we we're talking about doing like the, these these like bonding things with the students or to like look at the classroom environment. When you go to teachers, pay teachers and pay, you know, $3 for this mm -hmm. thing real quick and you don't have to design it. You, you just print it out. You study that. You have time to invest in doing everybody, so many other everybody things. Everybody has a strength. And like right. for me, my strength is my classroom environment yeah. and my relationships mm -hmm. with my students. That is my strength. Yeah. I do not have a strength in creating curriculum. Same. Like I, I can create activities and stuff. Yes. But like right. physically make it like these teachers that literally write whole passages, I think like pair passages. And stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah I like, don't understand it. Total Help props me. to you because I yeah. cannot, I couldn't do it. But that's why I think it's so stupid that we don't like have these newer teachers using resources that are available Already, to them. Yeah. Also, right. like, why do we teach children to aside, use resources but not we don't student teachers? Them, right. right. Classroom stuff aside, it is such a weight off of the shoulders as a teacher yes. to be able to have those resources. Excellent. We need to be taking care of our mental health as well right. as these kids. What other profession where is that you cannot collaborate with someone else, right? There's very few other yeah. other things where they're like, no, there's you need to do that work yourself because I need to know that you can do that work yourself. There's literally a standard like for the teaching the profession for collaboration. Yeah. Yes. So why are we, you know, why like, are we sh shaming there's so that? many things in education that don't make sense and that's yeah. one of them. Another, another thing that really drove me nuts when I was in college was the robbery that is a full year of unpaid student teaching. Yeah. Yes. It is a full year Highway of an robbery. unpaid internship and you are still paying full tuition. Yep. And right. so, and I always think about you're this. You're paying yep. to do your you're internship. You're paying yes. for your internship yeah. for an entire year. You're paying year. them to work. And, yeah. right. and <laughs> like, and I, I called out my university for this and they didn't have an answer for me. I said, how is it that I'm paying full price to do student teaching when I'm not in the building? Yeah. There is one advisor that I work with, but the people that are taking, you know, that are accountants, they're having, you know, five classes in a building. They have to have AC. I get you have yeah. to pay money to turn right. the lights on. Yeah. Why are we paying the same amount of money? The entire time that you're in college, they're telling you, well, you're not going to make a lot of money, so you better do it because you love the kids. Right. Yeah. So what do you have to look forward to? 100 percent right. because you're you're starting a deficit yeah right? well, even like, what i learned also is for some schools like when you're student teaching some schools will allow student teachers to get a sub license that's what i did and huh? sub for their like their mentor teacher right, when they're that. not there oh. and they don't have to have another body in the room because yeah. like let's be real they're teaching the whole day anyway right like i learned that you can still get a sub license and they can't pay you because you're technically mm -hmm, right. in a student yep. teaching program. So you can't mm -hmm. get paid to be a substitute and, teacher. And a lot what of these people, well, you ask, right. what you know, are we doing? Right. Yeah. Right. And ask around too, because there's a lot of universities out there. If you're in your internship, you have to sign a paperwork that says you will not work this and much that more than is hours. Ridiculous. So like I, like we can't work more than 10 hours a week. So you're allowing them, you're saying, I need you to do this for free. And I need the people who are single parents or people who, you know, are, are here in the, in the, you also can't. You can also like can't. You can't work more than ten hours. Cutting you off at thirty nine hours, so they don't have to give you insurance. One hundred percent. I'll cite it again. That's the the most messed up system. Messed up. I I don't think that makes any sense no. to me at all. I remember thinking that, like, when I was in my student teaching block, thinking I'm literally working a full time job mm -hmm. on top of my other job. I have to work because I need yeah. some money, money yeah. to pay for my car. <laughs> and, and you've, you've got Uber. class stuff you have to do oh, yeah. for the student teaching class right. yeah. that you are taking. And then you're then we're like, why don't why don't we have teachers? <laughs> 
yeah. people going to, to go to teach. Because, because you give them a shortage. year. Yeah, we of, make it impossible yeah, for them. It's like, yeah. crazy Treat us to like me. garbage. Yeah. It's, and then like, okay, also in in student teaching, we were not allowed to miss a single day. Yeah, really? I went Which to school. Crazy. Yeah. I went really? to, now they, I remember that. They the same university I went to, now they give them two days that they're allowed to miss. I cannot believe they were even allowed to miss. But even if we missed the two days, they would be very no, passive. No, I, I was not allowed to miss any days. I had friends who were student teachers, because I didn't, I, my my degree is in sports medicine, but I remember having friends that like, they could not, I'm like, hey yo, why yep. are you going to, why are you going sick? They're like, right. we're not allowed yeah. to miss Damn. a day right. at all. I remember being like, it's unrealistic. deathly ill and going into school to teach my little first graders because yeah. God forbid I miss like six hours uh, towards my because student teaching credit. they are conditioning you to do that when you're out to still go to school. Absolutely. That is what they're doing. Yeah. Say it one more time. They are conditioning you to do that when you're out of school. In his counsel. And then voice. does that not <laughs> did that not already put that guilt in my head? Yeah. For like when I'm sick and I have to take a day off. Exactly. Right. They want you to know that not only do you do this here, but you're gonna have to do it when you're I working had to, too. Like, okay, I was sick last Monday. I've had like a cold for the past two weeks. It was it would it was nasty, it would not go away. I took off Monday because I was sick and I did not feel good. I literally laid in bed battling back and forth for about 20 minutes whether or not I was going to call off. Mm -hmm. Did the same thing yesterday before I came down here because I literally was dying Thursday night. Yeah. And I was like, if I go to school tomorrow, no way am I going to be alive this right, weekend. Like, yeah. I can't, I couldn't. Yeah. So I feel guilt. I'm like, well, I just took a day off last week. I can't. No. I'm sick. Like, yeah. I sick, can't sick. help it, you know? They, and they don't teach you that. Advocate for yourself, self care too. They, and I hate that and I roll my eyes, but they really don't tell you. You have the autonomy to say, yeah. no. Yeah, no. Yeah. Is even a even as answer. a young teacher, even as a brand new teacher, like, do not let other administrators, teachers, mm -hmm whoever in that building tell you that you they know you better than you know you right because you don't and there i don't know why we treat it like there's a prize at the end of the year for not taking your days there ain't right. fam the it's prizes, in our contract the prize uh, is actually exhausted. my my are first, you no. serious no. listen no my first school i ever taught at they started giving an a, attendance incentive no. to the teachers they would pay them like an extra thousand dollars a semester or something or i don't know what the exact amount was it was a good chunk a of raffle. change yeah. if you if you like you didn't miss so many like if something. you were 100 percent there and i was like well guess i'm missing out on two thousand dollars because if i'm sick i'm not coming to school and, and any right. teacher that has small kids will never no. be able never. to win my that. Daughter, kids I, get sick all the my time. My daughter the other yeah. day right. woke up and I'm like, you went to bed, fine. Now you got a fever. Where uh -huh. did it come from? Yeah. And like, well, like don't dangle a money carrot in front no. of teachers' no. faces and make them don't feel like that. they have to come, like mm -hmm. whether they're on their deathbed or not. Because like, I always, I always right. say this: if you're able to write that check and say that you've allocated the funds for every single person to get a thousand dollars, so you're saying to me you could pay us all two thousand dollars more a year. It's but a choice not to. not to. I don't feel like this in my new school, but sometimes in my old school because we would have like eighteen to twenty teachers out sometimes. Yeah, yeah. you feel yeah. like you're doing like the guilty walk of shame when you come in the next morning because you wasn't at school the day before. Right. And you're like. Well, at my you first like school, why we you never we work. never had substitutes. So, like, if I was out, my three other second grade teachers would have to collapse my room and have right. eight extra students for the day. That made me feel like absolute garbage. Yep. Yeah. And then this school that I'm at now, like, they'll find coverage, but like everyone's dropping like flies right now. Yeah. Like oh. we're sick. Everyone's getting the cold. COVID is still happening here. Easter's and there. far this it year, so spring left. break is in. You know. But it's like everyone's getting sick, and there yeah. there's not enough coverage for everybody. But it's like that's not my problem i don't know right. the, this the school that i'm at now i have not i've been there since january not one single time have i covered a class i i, I don't even know who i Good. am anymore that's great. i'm like how is it that i don't have to cover a class i keep right. waiting like i kind of hide when i like somebody's not there and i'm like crap they're gonna ask me i don't know where they be finding people but don't they let be them find them. you in the hallway yeah, yeah. They don't, <laughs> listen they you look even, you look like not busy let me go get you something to do never I, I haven't seen them ask another teacher to cover a class yeah we don't do it at my school my principal doesn't even put it on i don't know where she finds the people I'm like, who? If the teachers ain't covering this class, you ain't got enough administrators and other people in this building. Where are these people popping right. up from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I, I, and I never have to worry about it. Right. Hey, you, hey, you busy? Right. That brings me oh, to I'll this week's episode it. of Good or Garbage with Gabe. What we're gonna be talking about today is this Good or Garbage. We're gonna be looking specifically at school air conditioning units. Garbage. 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 There are so many Waste schools. Management. There are so many They're schools in this country that literally do not have air conditioning. It is mind-blowing. Like down south, they literally 
have schools with no air conditioning, right, Bree? It's hot as hell at my school. Exactly. <laughs> I'll be in there sweat. It's hotter than my grandmama house in here. Yeah. How do you expect kids to learn when you're in a building that's hot as Hades? We all about to pass out. Exactly. All so, the nurse. are they good or garbage? In the new school, the school I teach at, I love my air conditioning unit. It's pretty cool. Any building that was built, I don't know, before 2015, they're garbage. Update. I'm update in the there, newer please. building. I have a classroom in the brand new building, and my AC, like in the Wednesday, it was. Oh, it was just swamp ass and nut fog the whole day. <laughs> and then they finally, they fixed it. So I walked in on no. Thursday and it was, oh, it was nice. But I still bought a fan. But the problem is that the AC units are new, but the breakers are old. Uh -huh. So the breaker keeps failing. We ain't never got two things that met. Nope. We got ah. copy paper, no working printer. You know, take it from us. You're going to learn on the job and yeah. you'll be you'll be great. Just don't. Be too hard on yourself your first few years of teaching. Yeah. Cause odds are you're gonna be kinda not great and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna make mistakes. Yeah. And that's okay. You kinda suck. We we all were. <laughs> like, final internship. Oh, my first year was a dumpster I'm looking fire. directly oh. at you, new teacher. Your final internship is the place to make all of your mistakes. Yep. It is not your grade book. They are here to help you. Yes. Yep. yep. Your make first year, just there. keep them alive. Yeah. Keep them mm -hmm. alive. Yes. They need that. teachers, they ain't gonna fire you. Yeah. Keep them alive. Yeah, well, that's the motto. What are they gonna There's been a teacher what shortage since what I was in middle school. What are they gonna do? Fire us? What y'all gonna do? Y'all ain't got no teachers. <laughs> but what you can do if you're a first year teacher is go to our comedy tour. Yay! Yeah! I thought you were gonna say that. I was yeah. like, oh, please, please. We're gonna be in DC, Philadelphia, Boston, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Love your energy. Boom, boom, boom. Mm. And you get to. Chat with us. You get we we See us live. a live podcast We're gonna play recording. Some fun games. Q &A, I'm gonna jump off the stage into the crowd. Some exclusive, <laughs> exclusive no, content. We oh, well. It's gonna be and it's gonna be two hours of icebreakers. <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody yeah. coming. So, come and guys, and we're gonna end with some self care. Yeah, self care. We're gonna end with some self care. Yeah. PD. We're gonna make PD. it the yeah. staff. Yeah. Exactly yeah. 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 Are we selling tickets? Or are we trying to keep them from coming okay, to the show? Okay. No. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be You're great coming to the show. Teachersoffduty.com. I think where you get the tickets. <laughs> it'll be great, guys. Yeah. Seriously. It'll be awesome. And we ain't doing no damn icebreakers. No. The <laughs> only ice we're going to be breaking is when we break the ice cubes to put it in our glass to pour the vodka in. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> Love y'all. Bye. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>Trust me, your boss will never find out that you just watched that entire episode while you're at work. But what you should do is check out episodes over here. Make sure you subscribe and look at us on Apple Podcasts. Check us out on Spotify. Give us five stars. We'd really appreciate it.